Welcome to this week's edition of the Casual Shooters Podcast. This week you have me and you have Leo. Hello. And this week we also have another guest. This week we have the match director for the Virginia State Championship, David Ankeny. Hi, everybody. Dave, if you would uh, go ahead and take a moment and introduce yourself. Uh, that's what my name is, Dave. Uh, been Great name, USP. by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> been shooting USPSA since 2013. I, I didn't even know it existed until then, which is a crying shame. Um, I was in the Marine Corps for seven and a half years, uh, and now I'm a counterterrorism specialist. That's awesome. good for them. <laughs> so you went from one counterterrorism job to another. Um, I mean, Marine, Marine Corps is really just infantry. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. It's funny you said that uh, you didn't even know USPSA existed in 2013, until 2013. I didn't know it existed until 2018. <laughs> wow. And that's when I got into it. So I'm right there with you. All right, so Dave, we usually ask a few questions to get to know you. Um, so I don't know if you if you've heard the podcast before, then you you know what's coming. So <laughs> you've you you may have uh, cheated and and planned ahead. I don't know. So we're going to start a little, with your a little cheating. A little cheating. Hey, it's only cheating if you get caught, right? I just ask the Democrat. Oh, I'm sorry. Your favorite movie? Oh, favorite movie? Yeah. I don't think I have a, an actual favorite movie. I, I've been good trying to think of that for the last couple of days. Um, so I think the, the one that sticks out in my mind right now that I've been that I watched on Netflix was uh, Extraction with uh, Chris Hemsworth. I thought that yeah. was really good. I don't he goes he goes to a I think it was a Latin American country to uh, rescue a kid. And he pretty much ends up being by himself uh, trying to rescue this kid. And he could have just left, gave the kid up, but he does the right thing and he sticks with it. And it, it ultimately costs him his life at the, at the end of it. But it's, uh, it's, it's really good. I mean, well, well made, a lot of action, a lot of action in it. It reminds me of the, uh, what was that Denzel Washington movie where he was a bodyguard? Man, Man on, on fire. fire. There, there you go. Movie too. Yeah, he puts that's the what explosive that up the guy's hiney hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does uh, under the bridge. <laughs> he does. Yes, he does. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that chief of police. <laughs> that was All right, cheap. I'm gonna have to check that out. You said that's on what? You, it's Netflix. on Netflix. Netflix. They do a real cool one shot. This is a really long extended shot. The director was actually is used to be a, a stunt coordinator, so that's why it's, I think it's shot so well. Yeah, there's actually one of the one shots. He's actually strapped to the front end of a car doing the camera. And then like they did a quick detach rig so that on one of the shots where the car stops, he can detach himself, run in like with the camera into the car and then run back out, hook himself back up and then continue the shot. It's pretty cool. Wow. Uh, Sorry. I mean, that. Now movies. No, that's 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 good info. All right. All right, Dave, your favorite book dave doesn't read um he's a marine, so you man. could be in the air force or the navy we yeah think. this must be a military <laughs> thing i would have thought you guys read more um only, I, mean, I, only did read a lot. I, I did read a lot when i was in the military um but uh i think the last book i actually read was darth maul oh wow <laughs> I, I actually really I, I really did like it because uh i, I love star wars and Darth Maul's character was just not really explored in the movies well at all. So the book and, and even the cartoons afterwards really uh, brought his character to life. So, and I, I would, I would prefer to see stuff, read stuff like that than, than true life things that they want me to read, like how to catch a terrorist and things like that. I, doesn't interest me, even though it's my job. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> Hopefully, not a lot of people will listen to this episode specifically. Sign <laughs> so just in charge of national security, guys. It's good. It's cool. 
Oh, I can do my job really good. <laughs> <laughs> the book's right. just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Reads a lot of briefings. <laughs> oh, <they suck. laughs> All right. In the spirit of Huggy, since he isn't here, your favorite superhero? Uh, Captain America. Uh, I like it. The, he, he's, he may not have like uh, – all those super superpowers and things like that, but his, to me, his his greatest superpower is the ability to inspire anyone around him. He can motivate anybody to do pretty much anything, uh, and in the right way. You know, if if you, if you watch the, the the movies or read the comics, um, without him, the Avengers are were like chaotic uh with his leadership and his inspiration they were they, they come together more and work as a team so for, for me captain america is just it so maybe the future leaders of america just need to watch captain america movies and figure out how he does it uh yeah but they would call him uh you know an extremist these days more than likely all right your favorite gun and caliber, they don't have to be the same either. Um, man, I'd say, well, I actually have a couple, but I'd say my accuracy in inter international ATAX, uh, in 308. Okay, I mean, <laughs> that's just the sniper in me, but uh, yeah, uh, that's why I like it. I mean, even though it's a 308 with 170 grain bullets, I can I can hit out to 1,200 meters. So, and then I also like my shadows, my CZ shadows. Okay. Meter, of course. Or CZ for the Canadians that listen to us. <laughs> CZ. Yeah, that way they know that what we're talking about. They get confused really easily. They're Canadian. They're too polite to say anything about it. The bougie gun of America. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in nine nine mic mic? Yeah, I use the nine mic mic in those because I don't okay. like forties. Sorry, it's okay. Sorry, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave, do you do you hand load uh, your three hundred eight ammo? I do. Uh, when I first started reloading, I, I was using a uh, single stage Lee press, so I was pouring the powder and. I had, I had a little tray of 50. I would pour it in there, put it on the thing, eat, and eat one at a time. Now I have a Dylan, uh, what's a 650. You know, okay. I do my own there. I Slight still upgrade. do, I still do I was, my 6.5 Creed like that, one at a time. Oh, see, with a rifle, I, I would. I would I'd okay. put it right back on a, on the Lee for, for rifle rounds. Okay. It's, it's way better to do it that way. Yeah, I, I, I feel, well, you're probably the, I mean, we're, we're similar. So I kind of feel like I have way more control over the quality uh, oh, yeah. of, of each individual round. Whereas if I was doing nine millimeter like you, I would want something where I could punch out a bunch at one time. So yeah, I think that like with the Dillons and things like that, when you're doing the multiple rounds and you're going kind of fast. It's not precise, it, truly precise, with with your, the amount of powder that you're putting in. You could be really precise with the uh, with loading it single. Yeah. Have you shot any rifle matches with your Apex? Uh, the last one was 20, 2018. I did a uh, what the FBI does a counterterrorism. Uh, team match okay uh, they do it at quantico did it three years in a row uh the only reason i got to do it's because i worked at nctc with the fbi there and the guy invited me to be his teammate so i okay. did that what's your optic on it i have a uh, night force optic but I don't have it here, so I would tell you exactly which one it is, but I don't have it here. It's all good. So it's just one. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's sarcasm. 
think it's like five grand. For that. Yeah, Night Force is not cheap, people. <laughs> no, not even Super their lowest expensive. end model is cheap. No, even the cheapest ones like like two thousand dollars or something like that. For yeah, the cheapest one. they don't they don't make cheap products. Yeah, no. I used to um, up until twenty eighteen. I used to go down to North Carolina. They have uh, across the course matches and long range any rifle, any sight matches down there. So I've got a Remington 700 and a um, Savage uh, BA that I would shoot my 6.5 Creedmoor in, 600-yard matches down there. So that was pretty nice. And all day long, 600, man, all day oh, long. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I would – but I, I would do it in a shooting jacket, so – See, I never got the shooting jacket thing. I no. did not wear one of those things. I can't. Well, I was on the I, summer team in 90 with the Marine Corps, so I actually I have know. a – I didn't like that? it then either. <laughs> I, I don't I mean, like the heat, but it's You go okay. to boot, you know, boot camp, they want you to wear that jacket and stuff, and I'm like, what? what? This is – no. Very uncomfortable. I don't I – don't, I, I don't get it. You, you watch the Olympics, and they're wearing these – they look like they're wearing these uh, pleather, you know, fake leather jackets. I mean, obviously they're not. They probably cost more than my car, but it, it just looks so uncomfortable. It, you it you, get, you it put all weird. that stuff on. It's like, how are you now? Are you getting an actual good weld? And you know, it's like I, I don't get it. And uh, you you get you get locked in pretty tight. It's like being in a vice because. Uh, <laughs> And it, it, it's very hot. If you've ever shot Quantico's 1,000-yard line in July, it gets about 110 degrees in that hole, yes. and you're wearing a T-shirt, a long-sleeve sweatshirt, short-sleeve sweatshirt over top of that, followed by a 20-pound leather coat, and then you're all strapped in, and you can't move. It's, it's, it gets warm, to say the least. That's where Leo, the headband, comes in. That's where I learned I had to wear a headband. Otherwise, my eyes would be filled with classy. sweat as well as my glasses. Yeah. Yeah, Camp Lejeune's uh, Stone Bay uh, range, the same way. I mean, super hot, humid. Yeah, just wear my camis, man. I think it's just because of the people that were there. <laughs> <laughs> I said what I said. I'm going to take it back. <laughs> there are some hot people in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave. Um, fond memories of that on there <laughs> of course at the time they weren't fond but they are now <laughs> yeah so your the unique question to you what was your favorite moment in your seven and a half years in the marine corps my my favorite moment a moment um deployment whatever what is your favorite time in the during your seven um, and a half years i guess my, my Best time I had was um, the, the short time I did uh, embassy duty in Tel Aviv. Oh, um, nice. I love I had Israel. I had deployed there two times on a regular Mediterranean float and just loved it. Went to Haifa, um, took some yeah. tours and stuff down through, you know, like Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and all that. And I was like, well, maybe one day I'll get back here, you know, for vacation or something like that. And then when I went to embassy duty, they ended up having a slot open there. And of course it was like a, a sought after spot, um, not considered hardship there because even though it's, even though it's a dangerous area, they don't consider it hardship because it's, it's, I mean, Definitely. you live a good life there, a good life, way, way better than I'm living right now. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, uh, you had to you pretty much had to graduate top 10 in the class to get it, to even think about getting it and luckily my detachment commander um for the school they have several different ones that run a couple different like like we'll say squads or they're their detachments but for most people they'll know what a squad is um so you'll have like six instructors and they have like three detachments under them mine was the attachment commander for israel at one time so he put in a word and i got it but 
unfortunately, the Gulf War broke out at the time. So I actually left. I did six months and then I left. Oh. So, I could, so I could go to the to the Gulf War. Um, yeah, I mean, it wow. was... I didn't want to miss out on going to a war, being an infantryman. <laughs> it's like right. kind of like a it's like a career Before killer. Women, but but there are right. Uh, uh, you know what though? Yeah, you, I, mean, I get it. I get the I get the choice. Beautiful the is, women. All you could do is look at them because you're not even allowed. To, you can't date any foreign nationals or anything. So all you not can do is look at the duty. women. All right, fair point. I have I have more fun with the Israeli women while I while I deployed there as a regular infantry man. Yep. Absolutely. That is so, that is by far of all the places I've gone to, by far that is my favorite place. It's 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 a great place. I I, mean, I you know you want to say, hey, take a vacation there. Tell people to take a vacation there. And then they're all like, Well, look what's happening over there. Nah, still go. Yeah, absolutely. It is a, I'm, I'm there. It's in a, a beautiful room. place. People are very friendly, um, and there's a lot of history to see over there, on both sides. Yeah. Um, yep, for sure. This segment brought to you by the Israeli Tourism Department. Not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> New sponsor. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned in the intro, you're the match director for the USPSA Virginia State Championship. Now, how many years have you done that? Was 2019 your first? Uh, yes, so we're, this will be our third year. Okay. Um, when I <laughs> Now, you said in the, in, before we started recording that I can ask you pretty much anything. When I, I will try to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> True. When I asked you at the end of last year's match if you were going to do this again, you just looked at me and then ignored my question. So I, I take it you're okay so far with doing it. Um, yeah, and all those pains are right back again, and I'm questioning why I'm doing this. <laughs> I bet. Um, there, there's some offline discussion we could do on that one. <laughs> okay. I get uh, it. It, this may be the um, – not not uh, because of me, but this may be the last one. Um, if we can get another venue, then we, I will do my best to run it again in 2022. But we will need another venue. Okay, I'm I'm tracking. Okay. <clears throat> now. You don't even live in Virginia, so what made you decide to do this the first time in 2019? Um, so basically, I, I shoot down at Fredericksburg a lot, and uh, the range is really great. I mean, they they have the capacity to have these big matches, and they haven't had a or hadn't had a big match there in years. I, I think the last one was probably like 2015 sectional it was probably the last one they had had. And there wasn't going to be another one there uh, at all. Nobody was thinking about it. Nobody, nobody even wanted to have a match there. So I just thought, you know, Hey, let me, let me bring this up. Let me ask the club to, you know, would you want to have a major, you know, get, get people back down here, get, get you guys back on the radar. Uh, that's pretty much how it came about. I, I just decided, hey, let's 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 do a big match down here again. Okay, and I take it they were amenable at the time, so yeah, they're. I think I think at the same year also um, uh, Delaware State decided to start, or, or Delaware decided to start running a match too. Um, they they put it right a month before. I was like, whew, it's going to be harsh on the ROs. You had Area 8, Delaware, and then mm. um, then VA State, State. Yeah. All, all within a month. Wow. All within a month. So we thought it was going to be pretty hard getting ROs. But actually, all three matches didn't have an issue with 
ROs. Okay. Unlike this year. <laughs> oh, this year's a little bit more of a struggle, huh? I am at the bare minimum for staff. Bare minimum. Wow. Okay. Yikes. So don't drop out staff, please. <laughs> yes, please don't. Now, last year, um, there was, as we discussed a, a earlier, there was, a, there was a lot of drama all around um, the match um, from a record number of DQs to winners being determined at the very last moment. Um, I will say I have never seen so many people watching practice score in my life. Now, I, I imagine that low cap nationals this year was the same way because it ended up being like Virginia state was last year where, you know, Nils didn't win it till the very last stage till everybody had finished shooting uh, low cap nationals to see who had won. That's exactly how Virginia state went last year. It came down yep. to that last stage to see who was shooting. So that was awesome. The, uh, the drama behind that was fantastic. Uh, I expect that a lot of the same shooters are coming back this year. Uh, yeah. So your my my core um, of winners, we'll, we'll say they they're all back. Um, okay. I I do believe our overall champion. I, I know people hate that overall champion thing, but uh, Aaron Eddins, I, I do not recall seeing his name. So okay. doesn't look like don't look like he's uh, defending his championship. So All so right. the belt is vacant. Oh, we're <laughs> looking for a new, not and still, sounds but like, a new. Sounds like Dave may have a chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wampler won it the first year. Uh, I can't remember. I think he. It was it was within uh, double digit points um, of him not getting it. Uh, last year, he had yeah. some issues. Yeah, he did. He ran him, him like a couple time. other people, didn't respect the uh, targets that were out there. <laughs> respect my authority. It happens. <laughs> That's why you, you, you think they're easy, but they're really not. And, See, that's why and, you have to be bad like me. I think all the targets are hard. <laughs> <laughs> Same for yeah, me. I'm, wondering, I'm like, that's going to be difficult. <laughs> and it's like a point and shoot. And yeah, I'm like, no, nah, it's going to be, you never know. You could see. I, I shoot my own match and I look at it and go, who set this up? Yeah. I mean, what were they thinking? Yeah. Like, I have a lot of swear words in mind when I look at stages. I'm like, mm, sons of, yep. Uh, that's why, that's why USPSA won't uh, repost my videos because there's a lot of explicits in them. <laughs> Not for children. Mm. Yeah. The hashtag angry Dave is actually there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's funny you bring up the belts because you have posted pictures of this year's belts. And they look like they've changed a little bit. They look amazing. So I have the one I could actually show you. Okay. So this I only have the one so far. This is the uh, overall championship belt. Wow. I'd wear that. Yeah, that's pretty spectacular. Uh, it's no, pretty, I wear that to work. I'm a big fat guy. <laughs> this thing is pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty big. Um, it, it's 18 karat gold. So no way. It, yeah, these this this belt is uh, over 500 bucks for this belt. Wow. So you're you're not winning something cheap. It's, wow. Yeah, that's not a toy. Yeah, and it's that's got from. Uh, Shameless plug. That's from Pro Am Belts, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, we also have. So normally we'll give out belts just to the uh, the overall winners, um, second and third as well, and then the divisions um, winner and second and third for them. This year, everybody gets a belt. Um, the the class winners and stuff were uh, plaques. Like normal, you get the little Virginia State shaped plaque. Right. So this year, everybody's going to get a belt that wins. Uh, oh, they just go wow. down in size. I was like, everybody's going to get a belt. I was like, yeah. Right, they get the smaller one. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
I don't know if, if you, I don't have any here because I'm, I'm not fortunate enough to be good enough to uh, win my own belts. <laughs> and I haven't <laughs> ordered, I haven't ordered the uh, other belts yet, but they go down in size. So you'll have um, the second and third place overall will get a, um, a 36 inch belt, which is, they call it a youth belt. So it's perfect okay. size for, it's good size for kids. Um, those are also the same belts that go to your division winner winners. And then the uh, second division, second and place, second and third place will get a uh, 28 inch belt. So it goes down a little bit. And then your class winners get a little 18 inch belt, which okay. almost looks like a, a giant watch. watch. Yeah. It's like a giant watch. <laughs> it's a choker. G shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to get them. They like have a choker. It. That's what I oh, said. Yeah, you... Wear it like a choker. Rabbit yeah. choker, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Family show. <laughs> I'm trying to get them to do them in um, urban camouflage this year, though. Okay. Yeah. The blue and gray. Uh, yeah, and. I'm doing a special one. I don't know if the Marine Corps shooting team wins or watches the podcast, but I am going to do a special one for them just as kind of like a joke. Uh, I'm doing a little 18 inch one for the high Marine. <laughs> <laughs> just because. And that's high shooter, just to clarify. Yeah, not uh, high yeah. shooter. <laughs> yeah. We haven't interviewed them yet. We'll, we'll, not, we'll ask them about it when we get them on not, the show. Not, not 420. <laughs> <laughs> right there you go yeah we're trying to uh trying to um set something up with tim high check but with this schedule it's kind of difficult so yeah they, they keep pretty busy yeah yeah i see they were at a match this weekend so yeah they put a lot of stuff on instagram the last couple of weeks yeah yeah they looked uh, pretty good uh, they team i think they're considered team two not team one uh, for their three gun team, they they actually they came in first place for uh, attack ops. Yeah, I saw that relay one yeah. that they did. They put on their Instagram it was pretty cool. Hmm. They had a couple of relay ones this year up there. Normally they do like one. You have to tag your guy and he goes right. forward. I think they had like two or three of them like that this year. One came in hot, gave gave his buddy a good game. I was like, <laughs> I want to be on that guy's team. <laughs> 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 would motivate me to shoot something. <laughs> uh, now, get, getting back to last year's match, um, the I missed the as I mentioned earlier. I had missed filling out the survey. Now, were there any interesting things you learned from the survey about the match, or was it all just general stuff you'd already heard from the shooters that that weekend anyway? Um, mostly what I had already heard. Um, the biggest takeaway from it was um, from stage nine, um, how close the uh, the table start. The, yeah, and it, it it turned out we had moved the table um, last minute to a different spot, which might or might not have caused some people some problems, but that wasn't even the that was that was for that stage and the amount of DQs that were on that stage. Um, they ran the gambit of DQs from ADs, 180s, premature starts, flagging themselves. Yeah. Um, there was just so many different uh, DQs on that. You can't say, oh, it's because of the table where you put the table, you caused a 180 trap. Um, that was wasn't even the biggest problem there. That wasn't that. So that was, was the biggest thing that was put in the survey was that stage. And uh, unlike Ben Stoger and them, where they said that we would just push it off on the shooters. Uh, no, I learned something. Put the table back where I originally designed the stage. Move the far left targets a little bit further forward so that people would be tempted to start aiming early. Um, even though you couldn't shoot those targets. Um, right. People just at the bring 180. Right. Yeah. They, uh, 
we, it was also COVID time. So I think a lot of people hadn't shot a lot. So, and then I noticed that at, like at our match, people really want those belts. Even if you're somewhat competitive, it's like, Hey, I have a chance. I can get this belt. This is a unique trophy. I want it. Yeah. So, so people go all out. I mean, I, I watch people and they, they kind of throw caution to the wind a little bit. Sometimes <laughs> they're like, Okay. Yep. And and that's what can happen. When and that's that. that is what ended up happening. I mean, exactly. Uh, well, and and you know, obviously, uh, I shot that match, and I didn't think that that was a dangerous stage um, at all. I uh, I did feel that I just had to be cautious of what I was doing, but I mean, that's like you have to do at every single match. There was nothing special about that. I actually thought the stage we talked about earlier, um, stage six was more of a concern to me, five or six, whichever one it was, it was um, six. where I had to back up and then go around that wall. I wanted to make sure that I cleared it enough with my gun still pointing forward. So I didn't end up trying to go around and turning my gun as I went around that 180 degrees around that wall. Yeah, I felt I mean, that was more of a concern to me as a shooter, you know, just being cautious of my own actions than stage nine was. In hindsight, after, after the match, I looked at that and I, I definitely could have, added at least an extra foot to that rear fault line. Um, I take full blame for that one. I set that stage up myself. And after looking at it, I was, yeah, that was pretty tight um, to be yeah, reaching just around. Like saying you had to stay in the fault line to get around the, the wall. You no, know? So. you didn't have to. Um, but even even when you shoot, if, if you shot and then you tried to run forward, you, you really had to put that firearm out beyond the wall to hit those targets because how tight it was. And then if you tried to move forward, if you were to bump the wall or anything, it was definitely going to cause a 180. And had I added a foot, uh, that would have taken that problem. Just, just one foot. That's all we actually needed. And that would have, that would have eliminated that problem. But again, there wasn't that many 180s there, but it was the mm -hmm. biggest 180 call on that one that caused the biggest issue of the entire match. Um, but I mean, we won't go into that one. Uh. <laughs> no, no, we won't. Um, but going back to stage nine too, I mean, I know that people were just doing crazy things that match. I mean, I don't know. Right. We have like seven times, not, not at stage nine, but seven times in general, people launched around over the berm during a run. Um, there was, there was four that left the range and a total of nine eighties in the match. Yeah. So people were just doing crazy things. And maybe you're onto something. Maybe it was just the fact that with COVID and everybody being locked down, they just <laughs> hadn't been yeah, shooting. They lost their mind. I mean, when you when you look at when you look at the uh there was 33 di disqualifications in that match, which was 10 or 11 percent, which is not good. But then when you look at it, uh, none of them really due to stage design. Um and when I say that, um, there could have been things that were done, obviously, uh, slightly better that would have eliminated those chances. But you, you can't take everything away from the shooter. I mean, if you just make it, uh, here you go, run this. This is going to be simple. Uh, where's the challenge in it? Um, you, you are, in the end, you're ultimately responsible for your own firearm and how you control it. Uh, 33 DQs and... It, every single DQ that's in the book was was uh, had every single one except for unsportsmanlike conduct. That was the only one it wasn't, and they were thing. all they were all they were all so close in numbers that you can't. I mean, you can't what, what pinpoint do do? one thing, right? Right. I mean, nine ads. Yeah, nine. that's crazy. I, have, I definitely don't have any control of that. I mean, no, and. And it's crazy because in 2019 and 2020, both times it was a table start. Both years we had people walk in front of the table in front of their yes. gun. Yes. And that happened a lot on stage nine. Uh, that and um, premature make ready. Uh, that was just. 
the oh, amount that's of, right. Yes. The, the amount of premature make readies, I think, <laughs> almost hit the 180s, uh, the amount of 180s that throughout yeah. that match. It was, and, it was ridiculous. And there's no amount of anything that can stop someone from – you know, pulling, you know, pointing their PCC down range or pulling their gun out of their holster before they're supposed to. Nope. I mean, that's, that's all on the shooter. So yeah, it was, that was just a crazy match. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it definitely had me worried at each call came in, you know, for the range master and, and it, it, you just say range master, uh, you, well, you know, yeah. you know, it's a DQ and it's like, what now? I mean, just, well, that's like, I, I, like I, I, a police I, officer I, driving up to the scene and is like, is it going to be bad or is there going to, are they going to be like, yeah, no, I get it. You got me my bad. Or are they going to be belligerent? Yeah. Yeah. Every year I buy, I, I usually, I buy 10 Dairy Queen cards, $5 gift, gift cards. And I'll give those to people who just who get disqualified. I ran out of those on day one. Yeah. Day one. That's legit. And, I know because and, I was hanging around you the entire match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, were, I was like, Dave, you didn't get a DQ? No, but the two Daves were in the same golf cart pretty much the entire match. He, he was he was my medic, and he actually got a, a – uh, he actually worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there were actually some issues. We had we had shrapnel to the head. Yes. We had um, a dislocated See, ankle. Um, no, it's not funny, but it's like how that happened was ridiculous. I mean, she was behind a you know, forty foot berm. I was about to say she was on the other side of the berm, and when one yeah. launched over, yeah. yeah, something came down and hit her, and she first she was just like, "Oh, it's nothing," and then blood was gushing out of her head. Yeah, <laughs> it and bleed a lot. We got all that stopped. Everything was good. The next day, she cut. Now she was the photographer too. Yeah, she was. Our so she wasn't even a competitor. And then she comes back the next day and she's like, Oh, I got two staples. We're like, What? Because <laughs> it started wearing a hard hat when night. she came back. No. <laughs> she was pretty tough. And the only reason she, she was, was worried, the only reason she was worried about it is because she was pregnant. Mm. She had just found it. She had just found out. Okay. That That's fun to go home lot. to your significant other. Be like, Well, I was working and I got shot. Um, <laughs> baby's fine. It's just my face. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, never, you never want to see stuff like that happen. I mean, it's no, at all. No. Yeah, I mean, never. And then the wow. guy that rolled rolled his ankle. Yeah. I thought he broke. I thought he broke his ankle. I thought that thing just snapped. It it like, dislocated for sure, and then yeah. it, it popped back in. The dude continued <laughs> shooting. I, well, he was standing on one leg. <laughs> It yeah, that thing, that thing blew up quick. I was like, dude, you need to go get that checked out. <laughs> so yeah, you got your um you, you worked that, that match. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> um yeah. 2019. The theme was, and I'm gonna share this. I oh. can tell you. I know. So in, in 2019, because I, I saved this, I still have it. Um, I actually use it sometimes as a dry fire target. Was uh, Civil War battles? This is wait, a wait, you stole my sign? I didn't steal it. I asked you. You said I could okay. have it. Okay. <laughs> so now you know where make, eight is. I had to make it allegedly one. stole. He acquired, <laughs> procured by other means. <laughs> Yeah, those were um, uh, the theme was battlefields in uh, the state yeah. of Virginia. Virginia Civil War battles. This was Chancellorsville. Actually, it was actually uh, any battle fought. So you had Revolutionary War. You had um, oh, okay, Civil War, eighteen twelve. I think. I think. I don't know if we have one from eighteen twelve. Okay, but yeah, so any any battle that was fought. There. I, th I thought this was interesting too because I had forgotten that Wampler was the um, stage sponsor. And yes, when I took the, took the picture, I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Wampler. Okay, so that was 2019. Last year, you had Medal of Honor winners from Virginia. Yep. What is this year's thing? So this year, I did a little, uh, um, we'll call it a special thing. I had people submit names of uh, fallen friends 
from uh, any any time in combat. Um, so the names of all the stages are people that somebody on that range uh, knows that was killed in combat. Oh, wow. Okay. Very nice. Wow. I'm working on getting the their pictures. So when you looked at that stage um, diagram for the shooters, uh, there's spots in the upper left and right. I'm working on getting everybody's picture. And yeah, so, so that we're, upper left and right. Uh, okay. So when you're when you're looking right. at that next to the stage uh, at the top of that diagram, that long um, God, I the can't think of my shape rectangle. That top rectangle. <laughs> you know, that, my fiber uh, would have gotten that. <laughs> yeah, those two little blank spaces on the upper left and right. Okay, yeah, I, right it'll be their right photo. There. Yeah, I'll put the photo yeah. on one side, and um, I don't know if I'll put anything on the other side. Uh, okay. Or I'll just slide it over so that you can see their their picture. Uh, or okay. I'm still, I mean, I'm not set on that. Underneath, like underneath that eight, uh, I will just put a bigger picture of them there. Oh, okay. Well, it would be cool if you could get like on one side their military like dress uniform photo, you know, and then the other side there's a regular I'm a normal human photo. Yeah, that, that might be a little bit of a problem. I mean, unless somebody has one. Like, I have a picture. So, stage one this year is um, somebody that that I lost. Mm -hmm. And um, I only have a picture of him in civilian attire. I think I, I tried to find the pictures that I had of him. Um, I know I had one from the Gulf War mm -hmm. um, just before he was killed in but I definitely have a picture of him from uh, in Dubai. Back when Dubai was, no, you, know, you didn't have a building over one store. Right. <laughs> there was nothing there at all. So, yeah, find it, getting somebody that, that has pictures of um, of them in, like, civilian clothes. Uh, definitely can get them in their uh, military clothes. You can go to the Fallen Heroes page. Right. Um, and you can get it off there, uh, especially with the new the newer um, right like say that. in the digital Long age, we call it. Yeah, the 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 enduring freedom and stuff like that. They they have all their stuff on there. Whereas you try to go back to uh, the Gulf War and things like that, it's a little bit harder with the pictures. But I'm 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 going to try it. We'll we'll see what I can get done. I don't want to just throw their name up there. It's not right. It's be like I Doug. I was going to say, any chance there's like going to be any bio about what they're maybe where the battle or whatever it was, where they I had, I had thought about that, um, trying to um, find a spot to put that, uh, maybe the matchbook. Uh, but I know a lot of people don't even read the matchbook. Oh, yeah. So. How you would read it. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about that. Okay. All right. That's pretty awesome. That is. That's Thanks. really nice. Okay. So I noticed too, when I took this picture, um, the stage designer was none other than yourself. <laughs> so uh, is there, and I believe Keanu has designed a few. Do you just have like a core group of people that design them or where do you come up with all the designs for the stage? Um, usually for VA state, it's myself and Matt Schwartz. Um, okay. This year, it's um, all but one stage I designed. Uh, Russ, Russell Fordney designed one of them. Oh, we okay. Actually, we actually removed one of mine and put his in. <laughs> oh, I, I see that he shot uh, Area 7 this weekend. He's shooting every match. It's every major. It's ridiculous. Really? Wow. Yeah. Good for him. And government I'm people, they don't have to work. I, I know. <laughs> Unless it's it nice, shift, right? Nice. <laughs> I know. Work from home, not work. <laughs> oh, we were just told we can't work from home anymore. Sorry, those of us that work in an office, Dave can't do his job from home. I wish I could. 
Sky I can't be mine from home either. I just have a yeah. I'll just have a BLS provider drive to somebody's house and then I'll video <laughs> conference with them. <laughs> yeah, you need to let him take you to the hospital. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so nor nor normally Matt Schwartz does a lot of the stages for VA State. So like over the last two years, uh, more than half of them were his. Um, and he runs a rundle, Practical Shooters in Annapolis. If you haven't shot there yet, uh, I highly suggest you do shoot that match. Um, it's too far I'm north. Just, I'm just afraid going into Maryland with yeah. my firearms and setup. You're okay. They don't. As long as just put them all in the trunk. Don't have loaded bags. You're okay. Oof. Okay. They won't bother you. Okay. They won't bother. They won't bother you at all. I'm gonna let Dave drive, and I'll sit in the back so it doesn't look like I'm kidnapping him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a chauffeur. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, no. you, yeah, you you bring up the whole uh, not want to drive into Maryland. Uh, Maryland State ran into that problem. A lot of people wouldn't come shoot it because they didn't understand what Maryland's laws were on bringing a firearm into our state. Um, it's not as bad as you think. Uh, there, if you're going to a match, um, especially if it's a two-day match, there's no problem with you going to your hotel with the firearm because um, you're there for an event that requires the firearm. Um, now, I will say that you shouldn't go to the match and then go out to eat afterward and keep the firearm with you in the car. Uh, you shouldn't do that. People do. <laughs> okay. But not, not recommended though. Not recommended because the law is to and from. So okay, I got. If you. you were to take it back to the hotel, lock it up, you're fine. Gotcha. Um, now I don't with that face, how much I don't like that, but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, with that said, uh, Maryland uh, law enforcement will not bother you. I mean, you have to do something extremely, extremely wrong. For you, if you get pulled over for a ticket, they're not even going to ask you, do you have firearm in your car? They won't even ask you. So it's not yeah. like New Jersey. No, not like them at all. So okay. I, I, I wouldn't worry about traveling into Maryland or through Maryland with a firearm. Okay. Just, Cause yeah, I was, I was definitely treating it like Southern Jersey. No, nah, just keep it in the trunk. Um, Dave, you'll be right there. Keep it in the trunk. Yeah, keep it in the trunk. Back it up. Like a song. Keep it in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um so we're you said you're in the process of writing up all the written stage briefings. Where are you in the process of having the stages approved through USPSA? The match is completely approved. Stages okay. have already, yep, everything's done. Um, I'm just tweaking, like while we were waiting, um, I was just tweaking the uh, CRO's stage uh, briefings. Um, I thought they were a little wordy, so I shared them with uh, Jim McBurnett, who's our range master, um, Russell Fortney. Uh, he's just going to be a CRO. But he's also a range master. And of course, Matt Schwartz, uh, who does a lot of work for <laughs> can't say if if Matt wasn't around, it'd be so difficult to have this match because he does a lot of work for me. Um, and what doesn't even want to be considered a assistant match director. Now he's also is he the one where you have borrowed stuff for yeah, past eight a matches? A rundle will supply um, it usually almost two stages worth of stuff um, as far as like steel target stands uh, so okay. that we could actually put it on the ground this year. Um, they're going to help out again. Um, York is going to help out with a couple pieces and Quantico is going to give us a lot of stuff. Uh, Cause okay. I, I added, I added so much more into this match this year that uh, I, I went well over what Fredericksburg has as far as uh, props. Um, I mean, all the walls and stuff that I already built myself, so or with the help of other people, but I say myself. I, um, I kind of feel like, I, now I could be wrong here. Um, this is the first time I've seen social media um, posts from you for the state match. 
But I, I feel like you're actually ahead of the game as for making targets because you posted a bunch of pictures of that. Now you've just said you built the walls and all. I mean, are, are you ahead of schedule with that or? I am way ahead of schedule. That's what I thought. I, so all your hard, all the hardcover targets for the entire match are completely made already. Uh, just because I like obviously have no life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I spend all day in the uh, garage uh, sniffing paint. Uh, yeah. Now we know <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> exactly. Now the only the only thing that will have to be made is uh, no shoot arrays. Uh, I don't want to do those because they, I can't put them back in the box because it'll be too long. Uh, all the hard cover, just put back in the bags, back in the box and they're ready to go. Uh, so just gluing together the uh, no shooter rays as far as okay. targets go and putting those, I have all the target sticks bought. Um, I bought a, some more fault lines. Don't know if I'll actually need them, but I bought some more. Um, Got to paint them. That's it. Okay. And, I didn't think that long. And just start putting everything on the ground uh, come September 27th. So that Monday? Yep. Monday morning. I get my whole uh, 8 o'clock in the morning to uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon to uh, set up. And then the club gets the range back. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, in the past, I feel like you've been limited on Monday and Tuesday with what you could do, and but it was full go from Wednesday or Tuesday afternoon on. Yeah, so Monday and Tuesday, it's a hard stop at 1,300. If, okay. some, if somebody shows up to shoot, if they don't show up to shoot, then we can continue to set up. Uh, we can't set up bays 1, 2, right. 10, and 11. Okay. Until until Wednesday. Um, okay. We can't we can't start on those until Wednesday. So we can do bays three, four, five, seven, eight, and nine. Can't do six either until Wednesday. Um, In case someone shoots rifle. Rifle, yeah. Okay. And this year six is a big stage. So. Oh. Uh, oh, that's exciting, I'm, actually. Yeah. No. No two stages in the same bay this year. Oh, um, I like it. I, I learned, I learned my lesson on that one. Okay. <laughs> that was such a bad backup. It was horrible. So yeah, it's, it's a big stage. It's got a lot of steel, um, unloaded start. You got to shoot it, Leo. I'm it's an unloaded table start. <laughs> I love it. But you All start I heard the steel. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I say a lot of steel. It's one, two, three, four, five. Six. I think it's, yeah, like it's already too many. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all, they're all mini poppers too. No yeah, no, he got to one and I was like, eh, and <laughs> I'm out. Well, there's, there's 33 pieces of steel or 33 poppers in this match. Uh, 11 oh, stages, wow. 33 poppers. Okay. <clears throat> Leo, you're frozen. Just so you know. You're, he's like, <clears throat> he is. <laughs> I'll have to make a thumbnail with that face. <laughs> Command shift four, copy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you answered one of my questions earlier. So Jim McBurnett's going to be the range master again? Yes. Okay. Fellow Marine at that? Yes. Yes, he is. There's a bunch of them hanging around and shooting the match. <laughs> now, is, is Tim going to then help with uh is tim high check going to do the same stuff he did last year yeah he's our stats uh officer again okay um, i tell you what i can't that man knows more about practice score and those those pads than i ever knew that even existed on those things down to like seeing how much battery power you have left on your tablet from his tablet right uh, who who you last approved and how, how many minutes it's taking you to run shooters all on that tablet. It's I didn't yeah, even know all that stuff could be shown on there. He's a genius with that. It, it ran very smooth because of that. Yeah, he was walking when he was walking around shooting. He was uh, uploading the scores while he was shooting too, so nobody was missing out. I mean, it was like as soon as you shot, 
your scores were up. Yeah. I and I was um I I want to say it was when I was talking to Mike Foley that I asked him about, you know, practice score and updating and live video feeds and all of that, but that is probably the thing that I loved about the, both of the state matches is the fact that it is it's instantaneous. That's why I feel yeah. like everybody was staring at practice score last year, the last half of Sunday, because it was so tight to see who was going to win. You know, everybody's like, Oh, how did he shoot that stage? How did he shoot that stage? Oh, uh Oh, it was, it was the, in that case, I mean, it was like who shot Jr. Yeah. Come carry optics was decided the very last shooter mm -hmm. of the match, the, 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 the very last shooter. Um, limited was decided the stage before they had actually already finished, and that was six points. Was all that Crazy. was six point difference. So it it, it took the uh, limited and carry optics down to the, the people shooting their last stage and carry optics, the very last shooter of the match. Before we do, it was getting dark while I was doing the interviews, hand, handing the belts off. So yes, if you win a belt. Yeah. You, you have to do an interview. Yeah, <laughs> this is true because I am the videographer. <laughs> I can, I can confirm. It's, a, it's not a long interview. So. No, it's really just whatever you want to say. And here's your yeah. belt. <laughs> <laughs> you can just take your belt and walk away, but you, you are, you are going to be on camera. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just do the Marshawn Lynch and just make it real awkward. Just be like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fine. I'm <laughs> yeah. all right with that. I, I am all right with that. <laughs> so is Jim going to supply the Wi-Fi setup again? or? Uh, so this year, uh, stage sponsor, uh, Go Fast, Don't Suck. Um, his new uh, One of his new ventures is uh, supplying all the tablets and timers for the matches now. And um, he also has the Wi-Fi set up. So you will have live scoring again, but this time it's from go fast. Don't suck. Okay. And all the ROs will be using the uh, AMG uh, commander uh, timers that will sync automatically to Ooh. the tablets. So they, you don't have to call out the time you're supposed to, but right. you do not have to call it out because it's all the, pad RO has to do is hit the button and it'll pop up on the screen. So also in practice score, you will also see all your splits. So if it's a 10 round stage, you fire 10 rounds, you'll see at what time each round was shot. And that, that that's available on practice score. I believe just a competitor at though. Okay. You know, nice though. Competitor at. A lot more to yeah, see. I just then. got one of those timers from Target. Was Target to say that was not a sponsor. Uh, that was used at. I can't remember what match it was used at, but I really like that thing. It's nice. Yeah, that's a cool timer. I had I had five of them for the staff last year. It was that, they're hard to get. Yeah, yeah. So he, he he makes each one by hand in his garage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But they are amazing. Yeah, I like it. I, I use it when I when I see RO or RO at a match, a major match. I, I use those timers. I don't use the timers that they give us. You know, they just work a lot better. Bigger numbers too. You know, being blind, I can see it. <laughs> well, we're kind of getting up there in age, Dave. That's what happens, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the paint and all the the all eating all that glue. <laughs> um, crayons. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I knew it was yeah. coming. <laughs> All the lead in the crayons. <laughs> I see you, big boy. Yep. Thank you. Now, That's a big dog. Yeah, and he's just a baby. He's only a year old. Holy. And he's over 100. That's Dave's mini horse. Yep. Yeah. I've got three of them. Jeez. I have my own stable in my house. Crazy. Um, so I, I've seen you posting pictures of you shooting PCC. What are you going to shoot this year? PCC. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, 
I'm sticking with it for this for this year. Uh, okay. I did shoot I did shoot production at uh, Quantico and Sanders just the last two matches, uh, just to grab the pistol again. And man, just just from shooting PCC for that little bit of time, I, I didn't even know how to hold the dang gun anymore. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> when I when, when I, I drew this? when I drew the where, where pistol, did I put my hands? When I drew the pistol at Quantico, I, I couldn't figure out. I was like, I had no idea how to grip the gun. I actually went, I had a hold of the, the pistol with the right hand cor cor correctly, but I almost started to bring the, my hand out to grab the fore grip of wow. the rifle. And I'm like, you got a pistol. <laughs> wow. So it, it was pretty was ugly. Yourself. Yeah, it was it was pretty ugly. It, it was like downright stupid. Like, what, what am yeah, I? It was doing? a Ricky Bobby interview. I don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here, <laughs> it, it was funny. That that week that weekend was so bad. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm going back. I'm going to shoot PCC still for the rest of the year. So Area Eight VA State are my last two majors. They will be PCC. I did. I did win a class for Mid Atlantic, so at least I got something out of it. Nice, so, very nice. Now, what day are you shooting? Um, area eight. Um, I haven't determined what day I want to shoot yet. Uh, I okay. get to shoot whenever I want. I'm staff yeah. coordinator, staff. so I, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm free to do whatever I want in that match. Uh, okay, well then I'll see you. That's why I was asking. Just yeah, let's shoot I, on Friday. So I'm. I would like to shoot on Sunday. Uh, don't know if it'll happen, but I'd like to shoot on Sunday with Mike uh, Schiefer, uh, just because I mean I talk to him a lot, taking a lot of advice from him, even even with the pistol. He shoots primarily PCC, but listening to what he's had to say with uh, just with movement and stuff, you know, being fat and broken, movement for me is pretty hard. So just listening to what he had to say has totally changed my times. Uh, I've, I've knocked I've knocked a couple seconds off each stage. Um, so I, I'd like to shoot with him and compare myself against him and see how embarrassing it really is. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will be pretty embarrassing, but uh, I, I think shooting with him would uh, definitely help out uh, my match. It gives you a benchmark. It does. I mean, because he's really good. He's really good. I mean, people knock PCC a lot. Um, it's fun. I like it. I mean, in the in the military, I mean, it, I, I only got a pistol when I was a scout sniper. Never had a pistol as a regular infantryman. Um, yeah, I had a pistol for uh, embassy duty, but that was a revolver. Shame, shame. But uh, yeah, yeah. what the State is. Department sister. <laughs> well, and the sad part too is Dave. I mean, even though the the M9 became the sidearm mm. for the sniper, there's no there's no time dedicated to going out and shooting that thing either. No, there's not. So. So yeah, and I didn't even qualify with the M9. I qualified with the revolver, Smith and Wesson Model 19 revolver, with the State Department. Um, technically not the Marine Corps, but they gave me. I got the pistol badge from that, and that was the okay. only time, only time I ever shot it. Wow! Didn't shoot it on. Never shot it past Embassy School. Wow! And then the M9 didn't qualify with it, but carried one. Right. Yeah. There was no for, time ever for dedicated a short, to short shooting. period. So yeah, I mean PCC is fun. I mean you, it 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 does take you take you back to when you were when I was in the military, and that's what you used when you did uh, mount training, uh, yep, urban terrain stuff. Everything. You didn't have a pistol, so that's what I think of it as. Uh, when I run the stages, I think I'm I'm doing uh, missions in urban terrain. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> We'll, we'll throw back to my time in the and then cardboard ninjas out of the way. Yeah, just to shoot the white guys. <laughs> Somebody was, as a matter of fact, it was Leo's brother. The other day, he and I were having a conversation, and um, 
It brought me back to when I carried a car 15 back in Okinawa. We had some, we had an old like uh, Vietnam era car 15. Absolutely loved that thing. Yeah. And now everybody's going to short little guns and I'm like, Oh, they all remind me of the car 15. We had, um, we had regular M16s and, and the Smith and Metal Mo Smith, Smith and Western Model 19s and MP5s on Embassy Duty in, nice. in Israel. So got the carry the MP5 around more than the uh, M16 there. M16s the MP only got broke out if something was happening. <laughs> there you go. And the MP5 is the ultimate. After you knew something bad went down. Yeah, something really bad was going on when you when you busted out the higher caliber rounds. Yeah. You know. That, that, that only happened once in my time there, so. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, Leo, do you have anything you'd like to ask? I mean, the only question I have is, how does it feel to have unlimited power as a master? Unlimited power? Um, <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you only have that power up until the uh, – until staff day when the, when the shooting starts, then, then you lose all your power. You, then you're just a person walking around doing pretty much nothing. It's just looking I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a lot of videos this year, which I go live on every stage instead of just a couple of stages like I did um, this previous year. So let's, hopefully we'll get an, an audience on that. Uh, okay. Where, where are you going to broadcast it to? Um, I think I'm going to do, uh, Instagram because you can go, I'm going to do the live on Instagram. Okay. And, uh, cause I think, I don't know. I, I probably could do Facebook live. Uh, I'd have to see what the, the, uh, follower, uh, rate is on both of those. <laughs> I'm, it's a, I'm it's not, a new page, is it not? Yeah. I just started it. Um, yeah. That's what I thought. A couple so we got to build like that a, up. I think okay. Like a month ago, just so I could post all those uh, targets. Yeah, because I think I was a little. I think <laughs> it was a little high. Work. I was a little high when I was doing them from all the paint fumes. <laughs> and we're not talking shooting at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, my garage. My garage. I mean, I would paint them outside. You would see them purple them at that back. point. <laughs> <laughs> they were purple. I thought they were blue. <laughs> <laughs> And wings, it was weird. <laughs> the fattest there, there Pegasus actually ever. One question I meant to ask. We're, um, you've had to move around the staff night. Uh, the last, the first year we did it at the hotel where everybody was staying. Last year we did it outside in a pavilion. Do you know where you're doing staff night yep. this time? Uh, we're planning on doing it at the uh, club again. Um, if it's nice, okay. I mean, it was pretty nice. I think it started getting a little chilly there toward the end, but I think I had enough to drink that I didn't really feel it. I could see my breath. <laughs> <laughs> I did have, and there was some, there was some good alcohol there. <laughs> um, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't believe there was any alcohol there, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know what don't you're care. talking about. I don't care. <laughs> Nobody had a gun. Okay. Nobody had a gun. It's staff nope, dinner, damn it. That is correct. That is absolutely we're, correct. We're allowed to have alcohol at staff dinner. But we'll, we'll probably have it there. I, I, the plan is to have it there again. Uh, we do have access to inside. So we only did it outside because it's easier to clean up. And it was pretty nice. I mean, the, I thought the temperature was really good and made cleanup a uh, hell of a lot easier because yeah. you're doing it pretty much right after the match. Uh, cause it goes so late and it gets dark really quick in, in October. So everybody had mud on their feet because it rained and that range got pretty muddy. So doing it inside, cleaning up is a pain in the butt. And we didn't have it at the hotel because, because of COVID. Right. Yeah. Uh, I actually kind of liked it. I actually liked it better outside. Like you did it too. Because even indoors, it was still, there was enough room for everybody, but it was still somewhat, you it know, was tight. it was tight. And out there in the pavilion, it's, it's not tight. I mean, you could, there was plenty of room for everybody to walk around. Your cars are right there. So yep. it was nice. I liked it. Yeah. They'll, 
they had us in a tiny, tiny room at the hotel originally. And then we decided, well, we're going to go out where they do breakfast and stuff. And it was still tight there. Um, yeah, it was. But this year I also got it, just in case it gets cold, I bought all the staff their choice, either a, a hoodie or a, a rain jacket. Uh, the rain jacket is actually kind of winterized. Uh, I tried mine on because I, 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 I opted for the rain jacket myself. It's it's kind of heavy. It'll keep you warm. Um, and they match the uh, staff shirts. You keeping so, the same don't tread on me staff shirt design? Uh, same theme, just a different look. Okay. Uh, like the first year was the yellow with the black snake going up the uh, side. And then second year was a black shirt with the yellow snake. This year it's a um, black shirt, subdued flag um, with the subdued uh, don't tread on me on the back and uh, the Gaddison flag on the front. Okay, nice. Very nice. So the staff will look good yet again. <laughs> I like it. Now you had everybody's first name on it before. Same thing, first name? Uh, no names. So no name. Just, you can wear it or hand it off to somebody else. Uh, okay. It also does not, also does not say staff. Um, so that, again, you can wear it anytime you want. Um, these, okay. these are, and these, this is what the staff wanted. So I left that stuff off. Um, cause a lot of them will use it for other, other, I actually see last year's, uh, shirts being used all, 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 all kinds of different places. Very they'll nice. Use it as, they'll use it as their shooting Jersey or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Well, Dave, those are all the questions we have. Um, if you would like to, anything else you want to add or you want to plug anything, we're, we're game. Um, I mean, I would like to add, uh, if you guys would like to uh, hang a banner or something up at the match, you're more than welcome to, if you have oh. one. Okay. We, we will have one. Dave, we got to make a banner, Dave. Yep. We will have a banner. <laughs> we, will, we will hang it up for you. Awesome. <laughs> we appreciate that. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. All right. That's all and, I got. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. I know you're tired. Um, so we appreciate your time and all the information you've provided. And it was nice uh, reminiscing about last year's match. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It was great. Until next time. Don't be a little bitch. Yeah.